YouTube, XD Shooter 1 has returned. It's been a minute since I've been on YouTube. I apologize for the absenteeism, I guess you'd call it. But I'm self-employed. I own a lawn care business here in Florida, and it's seasonal time. I'm working six, seven days a week, 12-hour days, so it's hard to get home and make videos. Anyway, I've been getting a lot of PMs and a lot of questions from subscribers uh, on the DIY holster making and the biggest question seems to be what tools do people need to get started so I'm just gonna throw this quick video up there by no mean is no means is this the uh, end all on what you need this just works for me I'm gonna go through and show you the tools and the materials some you definitely need and some are a bonus and some you can build on in a later time so with that being said let's get to it I don't want to make this video too long Right here, what you're looking at, nice, solid, sturdy surface to do your leather working because you're going to be using punches and, um, and mallets and hammers. and So granite, um, Corian, marble, something that's real sturdy. You can pick these pieces up. This is just a blank, probably 24 by 24. It's like a drop. Go to a granite or a marble company, and they sell these drops pretty cheap because they can't, you know, they're just cutouts from sinks and stuff like that. So that's the first thing. Nice, solid, sturdy surface. And there'll be no rhyme or reason of what tools go first. I'm just going to pick them as I go. So, utility knife, exacto knife. They also have head knives at Tandy Leather. I'm also going to tell you where you can pick most of these items up. Some are specific to Tandy Leather. Other places I went to was Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's. And a few things I've even imp improvised with things that I have laying around the house. So, again, uh, Tandy Leather or Leather Supply stores do sell things called head knives strictly for leather. Uh, they they make it really easy to cut leather, especially radiuses, but they're very expensive. I find what works for me is a good old-fashioned utility knife. This is what I use most of the time. So those are the knives. A uh, pair of scissors for cutting... Now this won't cut the leather, but this, well, let me get in frame. This won't cut the leather because the leather that you use for holster making is a little too thick. The thinner, like lining leather, pigskin leather, like one ounce, you can use scissors. Still gives it a kind of a funky, uh, a funky cut, but this for cutting your uh, thread, things like that. Regular pair of scissors, household item, you can get away with that. I just purchased these at a flea market locally. They're for sewing. And they work really, really well. So, scissors. You're going to need a cutting board or they make those self-healing cutting, cutting boards. I had this cutting board laying around the house. I bought this. Now you can buy those self-healing cutting boards. Tandy Leather sells them. Hobby Lobby sells them. I believe you can get them at Walmart also. But if you have a cutting board laying around the house to get you started, there's other tools that you definitely have to have. This is a, a luxury. Use, use the wife's cutting board. Just clean it up when you're done. That's all. Um, good rulers. Whoa. I'm wrecking the house. Good, uh, good ruler. I really prefer this one. Although this, this one is a lot safer because you can put your fingers up on the top and Use the utility knife, just be careful when you're cutting. Public service announcement, gotta throw that in there. I have another small, small ruler. Again, you can find these at Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Office Depot, Office Max. I'm not gonna give you prices on any of this because it was so long ago where I bought a lot, when I bought a lot of this stuff, um, it's been a long time, so you have to, you'll have to find the, the prices out for yourself. All right, so again, no rhyme or reason. You're gonna need you're going to need needles for leather working. You can't use your wife's sewing needles. These are blunt edge. Um, now these are John James. I did a lot of research online. I've had no issues with these. These are fantastic needles. And one package of, I believe, 25 of them. Um, I'm still on my first three that I've been, I probably have 20 holsters done with those three. I mean, if you take care of them, they'll last forever. But hopefully you can get that pause the video and um, 
These are the size I use, 1.0, I believe. You can find these on eBay. Um, I don't know if Tandy Leather sells John James, but these are by far the preferred needle for uh, for most leather workers. Now, it depends on this. I use this size because of the thread that I use um, for holster making. Now, if you want to do other items and you want smaller thread, a smaller needle would work. But this is for holster making. So, All right, so the needles. You're going to need pricking iron or a uh, whole stitch maker, I guess you'd call them, but they're usually called pricking irons. I bought this one at Hobby Lobby. I bought this one on eBay, and Tandy Leather also sells them. Okay, I even have one that was a, and they come in multiple sizes. You can get eight tooth, ten tooth. This was a four tooth, and I modified it. I cut those off, ground that down to make tighter turns if I wanted. So you're going to need an awl. Now there's a punch awl. That's just a pointed tip. I don't know if that, there you go. And you have a, I believe they call this a saddler's awl. This has a beveled edge on it. This helps to, uh, once you mark your stitches, this helps to make the holes a little bit bigger so you can uh, feed your th uh, thread through. Again, I bought that that one at Tandy Leather. This one I had laying around the house. Some form of a stylist. I got these on eBay. A scriber or a stylist, they call it, just to trace through a pattern. If you're going to be doing tooling, I'm not really doing tooling, but I do use this to mark my, my patterns on the leather instead of using a pen or um, a pencil. This way it leaves no ink or anything, and when you finish the edges, you can't see the marks. So, a stylist. And again, the all the punches or the um, pricking irons, those are necessities. You have to have them if you're going to be doing hand stitching. Now here's a, a stitching wheel, they call this. I got this at Tandy Leather. This goes down the stitch line, creates marks so you can tell how far apart your your stitch lines, your stitches should be. They have different sizes. I don't prefer this. I've, I've only used this once. I don't really like it. What I do is I groove my lines and then just uh, use my pricking irons and follow the groove line. So, but you, you, you know, a lot of guys use these. This again, Tandy Leather. You're going to need edge bevelers. They come in multiple sizes. Hopefully you can see that. They come in sizes like 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1 being the smallest, 4 being the largest. That bevels the edges to take the, uh, makes it a nice rounded edge on the sides of leather. These are a necessity for leather working, or holster making anyway. You want those edges to be more round. You don't want that little, the edge to look sloppy. And if it's, and if you leave that that burr on the edge, if it catches, it'll start to fray and it just looks terrible. So those you're going to need, Tandy Leather. Also, Spring, I, be, I believe Springfield Leather Company also sells them. And you can find these all on eBay as well. Um, you know, there's some Japanese companies, there's some China-made stuff. The Japanese companies have good quality stuff. But the Tandy Leather, for a couple extra dollars for those kind of tools, I think it's well worth it. This is your groove marker. This, you run this down the edge and it marks and this is adjustable here. You can spread this and that makes your line for marking the line and the grooving the leather so your stitching sits uh, down into it. Tandy leather again. Okay. Leather punches. I got a whole set anywhere from I believe it's an eighth of an inch all the way up to half an inch. These I bought on eBay. Again, you can find these at Tandy Leather. Um, you might be able to find those local at, say, like a Home Depot or something. I haven't seen them there. I, I couldn't find them. So, a wooden mallet or a hard plastic mallet. You're going to need something like this. You can find this. I got this at a local flea market. They also sell them. Uh, the wood ones, the hard plastic and rubber ones, they sell at Home Depot and Lowe's. You can also get them from, you 
can go to Tandy Leather. I mean, they have some that are $120 mallets. I mean, they're just, you know, they have like uh, Delrin or plastic. They're nice, but this will get you by for now. You really don't want to use a metallic hammer on your punches or your your pricking irons. It starts to mushroom out the tops and it'll ruin your other tools. So use something that's not metallic. Um, wool daubers for applying stain. Sponges also. I use sponges, rags, wool daubers, and an airbrush. That's what I use. These are, work really well. These work good for oiling up your leather too. I mean these have a, a hundred uses when it comes to leather working. Candy Leather sells these. They're real inexpensive. You can find these on eBay as well. You probably get a better deal on eBay for these. But uh, I go to my local Tandy and just buy a couple packages of them. Hand clamps. All different sizes. When you put your leather together, or you put a, you know, you uh, you want to clamp something together, these are invaluable. Uh, what I do is I lay my pieces flat on an overhang, and I put something like a flat surface. So I'm gluing something, and then just put a piece of wood over it, and just put these down the whole edge, and that'll hold the glue seam while it dries up. These are invaluable. Home Depot, Lowe's. That's where I got all of these. What else for tools? All right, hopefully I can get this into frame. Wow, this is a long video. Sorry guys, but this is all the tools that, that you really need. Um, this is my stitching pony. Now you can buy these at Tandy Leather. You can find these on eBay. People sell them. They're pretty expensive for what they are. If you're kind of handy, I mean, this is a makeshift one. I built this in less than probably 10 minutes. If you are pretty handy, you can make your stitching pony by yourself. And what you do is you take a piece of leather, you put it in there, it holds the piece. This part goes under your legs, so this holds it up. What I use is just a clamp to clamp this together. And I just made it out of old plywood and just put a piece in the middle so it just closes. Pretty simple. But you can find these, so you can build your own, you can find them at Tandy Leather. Um, look online, it's called a Stitch and Pony. Um, any other tools? Yeah, tools. Okay, so now they have an array of boning tools when you're when you wet form your holsters. If you're going to wet form, you don't have to wet form your holster. Uh, I like to do it. They do sell boning tools, they call them. Um, but I just found some stuff around the house that works great, right down to a teaspoon, right out of the kitchen drawer. Just don't tell the wife; she will get mad about that one. Small popsicle sticks. Paint stirrer sticks, I just thinned it out, took the, the pointy edge, blunted it a little bit, sanded it real well, because you don't want anything sharp or you will mar your leather, but a uh, paint stick. Deer antlers work great, as long as they're a nice smooth. I find the deer antler, I use these most when, I burn, when I'm uh, tool, uh, tooling the leather. Wet forming, sorry. These, these work really well. Uh, this, I don't even know where, I just saw this at the house, I have no idea what it is, but it's a nice flat little surface, and it goes down the crease of the leather really well. You can find the boning tools at the leather stores, I believe Hobby Lobby sells those also. They have a nice little selection for uh, leather working stuff. A marker, the top, nice and round, I get into the where the trigger guard is, and so anything like this, I mean anything that's smooth, that's round, that won't mar the leather, that you can use to form the leather, it'll work. And that is about it guys. I hope I didn't go too fast. If you did, if I did go too fast on any of this, uh, just PM me or send me a message and I'll contact you back. I can you know, go into a little more detail. I'm just trying to make this video a little bit shorter. It's 14 minutes already and, and I still have materials to go through. So let me clean all this crap up and set the cam reset the camera and we'll go into the material part. All right, we're back. I didn't think uh, it would be a 20 minute video to show you the tools and materials needed for leather working for holster making, but apparently there's a lot to it, I guess. All right, we're gonna start with the what I use for the thread. And again, by no means is this uh, be all end all. Everybody has their own personal preference. This is what works for me. I was using 
I was using some thicker thicker stuff, one millimeter thread. I just found it to be way too thick for most of the holsters I was using. So I switched to bonded nylon. 270 bonded nylon. Um, comes in, I believe this is a 500 foot roll. I think uh, I got this on eBay. Um, they come in multiple colors. I got black and white. I also have some wax thread. Wax thread works well if you're going to use like a natural more of a natural thread. The wax on there helps you slide the thread through the holes. I would definitely suggest if you're going to go that route, get wax. But the bonded nylon works perfect. And the results come out fantastic, in my opinion. Like I said, you use what you like. But you can find this on eBay. Tandy sells it. Springfield Leather. Uh, get online. Any any leather um, or sewing company will, will have this stuff. And it's pretty... Pretty inexpensive. I believe this cost me eighteen dollars. I'm sorry, and it's eight hundred yards of two seventy bonded nylon. And I believe it cost me eighteen dollars. I mean, I could make a hundred holsters out of this or more. So that's the thread. Um, Jewelers Rouge for stropping your tools. You definitely want something like this. I got this stuff at Harbor Freight. Also, a lot of these tools, um, the mallets and the utility knives, things like that, the scry um, the stylus, you can probably find it uh, at um, Harbor Freight. Sorry, brain fart. Anyway, you want to strop your tools, makes things cut and slide way easier over the leather. Jewelers Rouge, you know, sound effects with it, you know. Anyway, um, Jewelers Rouge. Beeswax for burnishing your edges. When, you, um, when you're done, you put a little bit of this on there. And then you can burnish them with a wheel. Uh, you can use canvas, denim. Uh, it really helps. If you don't want to go that route and you want just like a natural edge, you can just use some water. What I do is I, put, I use water first. Go back in my videos and you'll see that. I use water first, burnish them, and then I use beeswax. Also, what works well is gum trag. A lot of guys have switched away from this. This works great for me. I don't know why some people just don't like it. This helps with the burnishing. Works really good. Beeswax, gum trag. Beeswax, uh, eBay, um, I believe, like a health, health places also sell beeswax, uh, like beads. You can melt them down into a bar like this or whatever. Uh, I found this at eBay. Um, I got a whole, I think, ten of these bars. I forgot what the, what it cost, but gum trag again, um, Tandy leather. So that's that. While we're on the stuff like that, you don't need to. Again, if you want to keep your edges natural, um, I like to paint most of mine with an edge paint. It just looks better uh, to me. That was a necessity. That's what I prefer. You don't have to use this, but edge paint. Tandy Leather. Hobby Lobby also has a great selection of Phoebings uh, dyes and edge paints and gum trag and all that stuff. So you can check Hobby Lobby if you have one local. Dyes. Have to have dyes. I prefer the Phoebings Professional Oil dyes. They work really well for me. Just be careful. Make sure you have a ventilated place. Again, go back and check one of my videos. I'll explain all that to you. Candy leather, and um, I, I bought these, actually I bought this on eBay, it was a lot cheaper. I believe this was $8 for four fluid ounces, and you do go through this stuff pretty well. Acrylic resoline, f when you're finishing the leather, to put a nice shiny glossy finish on it. Again, candy leather, eBay sells this. Um, Neat's foot oil. To put the moisture back in after you uh, wet your leather and if you heat dry it or force dry it, this puts the um, moisture back into the leather. And this is a Phoebings product also. This is compound. You can get pure stuff also. I believe I got this on eBay also. What else? What else? Um, snaps. Uh, snaps if you're going to... If you're going to use them for, say, like an inside the waistband holster and you want the tabs, uh, you can buy these at um, Hobby Lobby too. Candy Leather sells them. eBay, you can find them online. And also, 
they come with uh, the setting tools in here. So that would be part of your tools. Only if you need them. And that's that. And then basically, it's just the leather itself. You know, um, what I use for my new logo. I use 8 to 10 ounce leather mostly for my holsters. I do have some exotic skins that I use. Also some thinner lining material, although I don't prefer to line my holsters for the most part. Tandy leather, you can find it on eBay, you can find it online. There's a lot of tannery places online that sell it. The only problem I found with online is you kind of take a chance. I like to see the hide I'm buying. I like to see the imperfections, the good spots, the bad spots. You just don't know buying them online. You just never know. But you can go that route. There are some good places out there. And that seems to be about it, guys. It's kind of a longer video, and I thought if I did forget anything, I'll put uh, something at the bottom here at the video. Uh, if I forgot an item that I do use all the time for this, I'll list it down here where you can find it. Again, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, PM me or send me a comment below, and I'll do the best to answer any of your questions. And it's good to talk to you guys again, and uh, you'll be hearing more from me coming up. Season's starting to come to a close almost, and I got a little more time now. So, With that being said, I'm out of here. You guys be safe and have a great day.